Greetings everyone and welcome back. And here's a powerful project, the DIY bench power supply. With the exception of PSU we used, which was extracted from an old Ender 3 printer, everything was made completely from scratch. Here we are using the ZK4KX DC-DC bug boost converter module, an adjustable regulated power supply module with a voltage range of 0.5V to 30V and 4 amps. It can be used for number of power related applications such as solar battery charger, as a boost converter to drive high power LEDs or even to create bench power supply. We created a PCB with a flux capacitor design to add some visual elements to our project. It has a few SMD LEDs that continuously displays an animation like a flux capacitor. The ATtiny85 microcontroller drives all these LEDs and the SMPS power the power supply. We have added a power inlet box with fuse holder along with a few banana pins connector and other stuff which are all clearly explained in this video. So let's get started. The heart of this project is this ZK4KX DC-DC buck boost converter which is a 0.5V to 30V 4 amps power module adjustable regulated power supply featuring an LCD that can display input and output voltage output current, output power, output capacity, output time, along with many key features like a good conversion efficiency of 88%, stable 3 amp output current, and input and output reverse protection and more. We are using an old 3D printer's 24 volt 10 amp power supply as our power source. Given that the ZK4KX module only allow voltage up to 30 volt, a 24 volt PSU was ideal for this situation. More specifically, this supply was manufactured by Chingliang. It is a 360 watt 24 volt PSU with a maximum output current of 15 amps. The primary body of the bench power supply is composed of three main sections that are connected to create a single cohesive body. The ZK4KX converter module and four female banana pin sockets are added to the output section, which also has a knob switch on the front side. Then there's the power in section, which houses the power inlet socket. Also connected between the output section and the power in section, we have a middle section that combine both of these parts together. In addition, a custom PCB has been added to the front face of the middle part and power in section. On this PCB, LEDs will be placed to create an aesthetically pleasing light board that is modeled after a flux capacitor. The model was created using Fusion 360 and then three different PLA colors, white, gray and black, were used to 3D print them. The flux capacitor circuit was designed first with one major change from the original project I made a couple of years ago. Also, we have used five N-channel MOSFETs in this case for powering the five LEDs separately. The I.O. pins of the ATtiny85 are connected to the gate of each MOSFET through a resistor. The device is turned on and off by the push button switch that is connected to the VCC. To further limit the current flowing through the LEDs, we have included a load resistor in this case. A 1K resistor is being utilized in the package of 2512. This circuit was actually from an old similar project which you can check out on my channel. As for the PCB outline and the board design, we have basically used the layout made in the CAD file. After completing the PCB, we exported the Gerber data and send it to PCBWay for samples. We place an order for a white silk screen LED board. After placing the order, the PCBs were then received within a week and the PCB quality was pretty great. They are presently celebrating their 10th anniversary in business by hosting a tour that include a few activities in which you can take part and win some goodies, such as special coupons and chance to open blind boxes filled with merchandise from their gift shop. PCBVA's commitment to quality and customer satisfaction has always been unwavering, leading to significant growth and expansion. You guys can check PCBVA out if you want great PCB service at an affordable rate and low price. The PCB assembly process began by first adding solder paste to each component pad. Next, we pick and organize each SMD component after positioning them in their proper location. After that, we set the board on our PCB reflow hot plate, 
which increases the PCB's temperature from below to the point at which the solder paste melt, allowing the components to be soldered to their pads. Next, we place the push switch and the dip 8 socket in their proper location and then use a soldering iron to solder their respective pads. The board is now completed. This is the basic core that we utilize for this project. Five I.O. pins of the ATtiny85, the D0, D1, D2, D3 and D4 are all connected to each of the five output pins that we are using. You can download this sketch along with other details about this project from this project page. Link is in video description. We use a DC-DC buck converter module which runs at 7 to 26 volt and can provide a constant output of 5 volt to power the flux capacitor. Here we connected the DC-DC buck converter's output wires to the VCC and ground of the flux capacitor board after adding wires for the module's input and output using a soldering iron. The assembly process began with setting up the output section and inserting the ZK4KX module into the designated body slot. We next insert the female banana pin connector on the four holes on the body and tighten them up firmly with the provided M4 nuts. The banana pin has a washer-like part that we can solder wire to and make connections on. To that end, we connected two washers together by soldering wires on them. We then added an extra wire to link the washer wire assembly to the ZK4KX converter module's output terminal. We created a total of two washers wire assemblies each of which is positioned behind the banana pin that have been inserted to the output body section. The banana pin will be connected to the ZK4KX module's positive and negative output terminal via these two washers wire assembly. The toggle switch was then inserted and tightened into the body's designated holes. Next, we connected the toggle switch to the ZK4KX module. This switch is designed to break the positive line that connects the module's input to the power supply. Starting with the power inlet and fastening it with the two M2 screws, we now begin the assembly of the power input section. Using the 6 M2 screws, 3 on the bottom and 3 on the top, we join the middle section and the power input section together. On the front face of the power input middle section assembly, we then position the flux capacitor PCB in its proper location. The flux capacitor PCB is then fastened to its location using 4 M2 screws. The live neutral and the ground wire are connected to the SMPS terminals to initiate the final assembly process. The DC-DC buck modules positive and negative were then connected to the SMPS 24 volt and ground terminals. Next, we connected the ZK4KX input terminal to the SMPS 24 volt and ground terminals. We now slide the SMPS into the power input section. On the opposite side, we added the output section on top of the power input section. The SMPS is now secured between these two sections. 
Next, we use six M2 screws to attach both sections together. The assembly is now completed. The result of this project is this DIY bench power supply that was put together from scratch using a few components. Here we use a 3D printer salvage SMPS to power both the flux capacitor circuit and the ZK4KX module. In order to test this setup, we operate a 12 volt gear DC motor by connecting the motor power terminals using the banana pin that is attached to an alligator clip. In the same way, we power our previously made LED badge project, which utilized 3.4 volts. This device low 50 mA consumption was shown on the ZK4KX display. The ZK4KX module can be used to drive a variety of load with constant current or voltage while monitoring a number of parameters such as power consumption, power, current and temperature, all of which are quite helpful. This bench power supply project should last at least 5 or 6 years, but we have to wait and see what happens next. Overall, this project was a success and need no further revisions. In addition, we appreciate PCB waste support of this project. Visit them for variety of PCB related services such as stencil service, PCB assembly services as well as 3D printing services. Thanks for reaching this far and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.